Hey everybody, welcome back. This is what happens when crazy meets TikTok. Just a small friendly reminder that if you haven't picked up some of your petty merch, we're having a sale right now. 10% off is automatically applied at checkout. So if you haven't picked any up and you need some ideas for Christmas presents, head to shop.charlottedobre.net. The sale ends on Christmas, okay? Call me crazy if you want, but I've never liked store-bought pets. Wow, Susie, that is crazy. Almost as crazy as this one time back in 2019 when I was made aware of this fake Facebook profile that was using my pictures and my name, but instead of it being Sophie Phelps Swainy, it was Sophie Ray Swainy. And this Sophie Ray Swainy account was in a relationship with this guy named Jacob McGuire who had a mohawk. And there was photoshopped pictures of me with this Jacob McGuire guy and also like sonograms as if I was pregnant. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> that's kind of weird. But like, there's people that make fake profiles of me all the time. You know, I'm just going to report it and block it and move on with my life. So I move on with my life don't think much of it and then a couple months later it's the beginning of 2020 and all of a sudden you are bombarded with hundreds of messages on Facebook and Instagram of people being like the skin suit video the FBI the CIA the skin suit and you're like skin, skin suit? suit what the fuck are y'all talking about so you finally find the video on Facebook and it is a video of this Jacob McGuire guy with his mohawk and this like morbidly obese woman and the girl is claiming that she is the real Sophie but that the real Sophie has actually been put inside of her that the FBI has her inside of a skin suit <laughs> and that the Sophie that everybody sees on social media on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok is actually an FBI clone of her and that she's the real Sophie and the Sophie that's out there on social media is living at her dad's house and riding her horses and shooting her guns and playing with her dogs and all this other very insane stuff and it's like a 10 minute long video of Jacob McGuire and this girl claiming that the real Sophie is in the skin suit <laughs> inside of her body and that she's four months pregnant and it's so unhealthy and it's not good for her and that the FBI needs to come and take her out of this skin suit and you're like what the f this is f weird and all of the comments are people tagging the FBI in the skin suit and the video is going viral and you're like this is so what? weird and then you look the next day and the video is gone which luckily you screen recorded part of it so you still have part of it you're like man that was really weird and then you just move on with your life because what are you going to do about it <laughs> so then a couple months goes by and it's like peak COVID season and you have a friend come and pick you up and take you to the tanning bed because your truck is in the shop and when you get to the tanning bed you get a notification on your ring doorbell that somebody is at your front door and you look and you see a guy facing the other way and you're like oh it's probably the mailman who needs like a signature or something so you get on there and you're like hi can I help you and the guy turns around and oh, he has a mohawk and it's Jacob Stop. McGuire standing at your front door no. and you're like oh my god this is not oh, good like, that's you tell weird. Your friend, like call the police and tell them to get to my house right now this is not good and you answer and you're like uh can i help you and he's like yeah i'm looking for randall swaney and sophie swaney my name is jacob mcguire and you're like um what and he's like i need sophie swaney i need Sophie." no swaney. you absolutely do like, not um, she doesn't live here like you have the wrong address so then he leaves and you're like oh my gosh this is so weird so the police meet you at your house and then you explain to them the whole situation and you show them the video on facebook that you screen recorded and you see everything else and if y'all want to see that video let me know because I still have it and they're like okay you know we're gonna make a report of this but we can't actually like do anything about it because he didn't actually like violate any laws and you're like man that sucks but at least there's like a paper trail that this happened because this is insane and now he has your address and he knows where you live Whoa. even though you told him that you didn't live there so then you go back inside of your house after the police leave and you check your email and you have an email from a u.s marshal and it's like hi sophie this is u.s marshal so and so um we had a gentleman named jacob mcguire show up at our office today claiming that you were his wife and that you had been kidnapped um you know he seemed like he was in a lot of trouble and basically was like really really messed up do you know this person no. are you okay can you just respond to me to let me know if this person is you know basically wrong or what's going on because I am worried about you. So you think, oh my gosh, this is Jacob McGuire pretending to be a U.S. Marshal. And then you look it up and you look the guy's name up and it turns out he is actually a U.S. Marshal. So you're you're like, okay. So then you call them and the U.S. Marshal's office in Little Rock, Arkansas, because you live in Memphis at the time. And you're like, hi, I'm looking for, you know, U.S. Marshal so-and-so. And they're like, oh, he's not here. And you're like, well, my name is Sophie Swaney. And I just had this guy show up at my house um, claiming that the FBI kidnapped me looking for me. And I got an email from this U.S. Marshal that he had been there first. So I'm trying to get in touch with him. And they're like, oh my gosh, yes, we will get him in touch with you. So you get off the phone and he immediately calls you from his cell phone. And he explains that earlier in the day, the guy and the girl from from the video drove all the way from Alabama to to Little Rock, Arkansas, and went into the U.S. Marshal's office and was like, hey, my wife has been kidnapped by the FBI and the CIA. I need help. And they're like, okay, like, come sit down with us. Let's figure this out. And 
they start talking and asking him like, hey, when is her birthday? Like, where was she born? How long have y'all been married? And he can't answer any of the questions. Or they're like, hmm, this is weird. So then they go in the back to look up information on him. And when they come back out, he and the girl have left and apparently driven to my house in Memphis. And he's like, you know, I just need you to know this is actually a dangerous situation. This guy, Jacob McGuire, has 27 counts of false imprisonment against him on top of having kidnapping charges Whoa. and um, domestic violence and assault charges against him. And you're like, oh my gosh, what in the world? What happened? He's like, apparently he's a... And he thought that his last girlfriend was also a skin suit from the FBI. So he kidnapped her and held her hostage in his house and then cut her open to prove that she was a skin suit, even though obviously she wasn't. And he got released. And you're like, what? Why would this person be released? Like, what in the world? This <laughs> is so scary. So they're able to put an APB out for him and find him. And he gets pulled over when him and that girl are on the way back to Alabama and they get arrested. And while you're in the process of getting an order of protection against him and, and basically charging him with all this stuff, you get a text message on April 1st that he's been released from jail Why? and you're like ha april fools like he's been released and then it's like wait this is not an april fools who's he's literally been released and this guy is just running free How? and is a thinks that the FBI has kidnapped me and now he knows where I live and he's going to come and find me and kidnap me and cut me open. But you don't hear anything about it for months and you're like, okay, maybe everything is cool. And then it's been three years. And then about five days ago, I get a text message from somebody that's like, hey, Jacob McGuire is at it again. And it's a screenshot of Jacob McGuire's Facebook. And it's all of these posts about Sophie. I need you. I need to find you. But instead, this time, instead of me being the skin suit and his <laughs> girlfriend that's been locked up, I am his daughter that the FBI has kidnapped and he's looking for me again. And you're like, wow. Jacob McGuire is at it again. But pesto, that's crazy. Okay, normally I would have interjected a little bit, but she was talking a lot and very, very fast. I have a few things to say. What I don't understand is, why is it that police wait until the absolute last second to do anything? Like, there's very clearly an issue here going on. Like, I understand he hasn't committed any crimes against you at this point. Although impersonation and harassment could be a couple of them. But like, why are we not keeping this person in jail? Also, store-bought pesto is delicious. <laughs> you just have to get the right store-bought pesto from Genova. You gotta get it from the Genova, Genovese. I won't order store-bought pesto from a restaurant because I find it all to be disgusting. It's all a bit nutty to me. Same like this story. Just a bit nutty for my taste. We need to see that video. Wait, wait, wait. All right, we rolling now. Hi guys, this is Sophie Sweeney and I was uh, on Instagram and I was on TikTok and Twitter, well they're not my TikTok and Twitter and Instagram, but uh, they was and then they wasn't. It's kind of confusing, I know. But there is this girl who is living up at my dad's house. She is feeding my dog. She's playing with my dog. She's riding my horses. She's shooting my gun. She's wearing my clothes, etc. She changed my bedroom out and everything else. And I have been in this suit for technically two years, on and off. And you can tell it's fake by the mouthpiece. See? No, I don't. I don't see. It's fake. And I just wanted everyone to know that uh, my boyfriend, Jacob McGuire, is not crazy and not psychotic. Oh, yeah? And he did not make the fake Facebook. I had to make that Facebook because they took my Facebook away from me and they wouldn't let me log into it. So, because I've been posing as Carly Spears, and I'm really not Carly Spears, I'm really Sophie Slaney in a suit. Um, I know I don't look that great in this suit. Um, if you could imagine what we've been through the past two years, you probably wouldn't look this great either. Are you going to introduce yourself? Yeah. I'm Jacob McGuire. I've been oh, up here dealing is. with this for two years now. CIA and the FBI has been involved in this. They've got Sophie in this. Okay, listen, Jacob. <laughs> there are some things that are preventing me from believing you. <laughs> Mostly because I don't know what the hell is going... Does anyone else not know what the hell is going on here? What in the actual hell is going on? Imagine you just wake up one day to find out that someone is pretending to be you in a skin suit. 
Like, on my list of things that I'm worried about, I didn't really think that I would need to, like, add that to the list, but, like, now I'm definitely worried. Didn't know that we needed to add that to a bingo card. Terrified of random things bingo card, but here we are. My 2023 bingo card also now includes being afraid of someone pretending to be me in a skin suit. Is that actually what's happening here? <laughs> I can't even keep up. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. All these people are very clearly mentally ill. Why do they keep releasing him? Literally, like, why are you letting it get to this point? I feel like there are definitely some red flags in that story. Definitely some things we should be concerned about as a society. We don't think that we should maybe keep this person in jail. <sighs> okay. Call me crazy if you want, but I've never liked store pop. Susie, you're right. That's absolutely <laughs> So this one night, I was 21. I was going to sleep like normal, living in Wellington, New Zealand. And I don't know, I was expecting to just get up and go to uni the next day. But I ended up falling asleep and finding myself in a dream. Now, what typically happens with me when I'm dreaming is I'm aware that I'm dreaming. I so like, don't think it's quite lucid dreaming, but it's just like a level of awareness, I guess. And what was starting to happen around this time as well was I was getting pregnancy dreams. And this happened to be one of those. So I was pregnant and I could feel the baby in my belly. I could feel everything. And you know, it got attached to it because I'm a young woman and it's biology. <laughs> But after a while, I'm starting to realize that this dream is going on for quite a long time. And it's getting later in the day, later in the day, to the point where it's like time to kind of go to bed. And I'm just like, this is weird. I've never gone to bed in a dream before. So I go to bed expecting that when I wake up in the morning, I'll just be woken up from my dream. I'll be back in my bed in Wellington. But that doesn't happen. I wake up and I'm still in the dream. So this cycle kind of repeats itself over the next few days. I kind of wait to go to sleep at night to hope that I'm going to wake up again. And I don't wake what? up. I'm still just in this dream. And I'm kind of thinking about my family at this point. I'm missing my boyfriend. I'm missing everything. And then more days go by and more days go by and I'm in labor. And I guess it's good to say that like in all the pregnancy dreams I've had before, I've never given birth in any of them. So this was kind of like the moment I was waiting for when all this was going on. I was like, okay, well, I've never actually given birth in a dream before. So when I'm giving birth, that's when I'll wake up. But did I? No. Nope. <laughs> I was on the hospital bed. I started giving birth. I've also never felt pain in a dream, but I felt this. I felt every bit. Oh, hell no. Birth. Absolutely and not. I gave birth to a baby boy. I named him. I did everything that a new mother would do, which is weird because how would I know what a mother would do? I'm not a mother <laughs> myself yet. And um, every day I was still kind of hoping to wake up. Still, how long like, were you asleep, kind dude? In this weird little space, like starting a new life, but also wondering when I'm going to get back to my old one. It gets to my son's second birthday and I reach acceptance. I'm like, okay, I miss my family, but I have to accept I'm never going to see them again. This is my new life now. I have my son. This is my life. I watch him grow up. I watch him go to school for the first time. I watch him get his first crush, graduate, get married, have his own two kids. And then on the day of his 40th birthday, I throw him a surprise party. It's kind of weird to say I, there was never a father in the picture. Like, it was always just us two. Um, but I remember what it looked like. Like, there was a picnic table outside. There were heaps of trees in our backyard. We lived in a double-story wooden terraced house. And we were singing him happy birthday. And I woke up. I was back in my bed in Wellington. No longer this, like, six-year-old woman with a 40-year-old son. I was 21. In my How bed, long were you asleep? About to go to uni. What? Like I that was, was one night? For what felt like 40 years. Been oh, dream. that was an alternate. But as I lay there when I woke up, I was happy to be back, but I missed my son. And I cried, and 
I went through this grieving process for my son that I had raised for 40 years. And I couldn't tell anyone because I didn't want them to think I was crazy. I honestly, does anybody else think that she like woke up in the matrix? Like that was like an alternate universe, I think. I think it is highly possible, my dear, that you woke up in an alternate universe where you had a child. If anyone didn't believe in the Matrix, I bet you do now. We are all just in skin suits right now. That's interesting that you grieved because like, honestly, after that, I would be afraid to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm terrified. Like what's on the menu today? Oh, we're just gonna get pregnant and have a baby and you're gonna feel all of the pain of having a child and then you're gonna sleep for what feels like 40 years. Uh, no, never going to sleep again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Honestly, poor girl. Like, I'm glad that she likes the joke and thinks it's funny. <laughs> For the record, Susie approves of the trend. She's not offended by it as far as I know. Just imagine, one day you make a TikTok and you want to talk about making some pesto and then all of a sudden everybody just trauma dumps. <laughs> Everything psychotic that's ever happened. Like it just keeps getting crazier. We have no shortage of these videos, guys. It could go on forever. That's absolutely crazy. I, mean, I was at this club and the reason I was at this club was because my husband's a singer and he doesn't really sing professionally anymore, but every once in a while old bands that he used to play with will call him and be like, hey, come sing with us. So that's what he was doing there. So that's what I was doing there. And I, for some reason, just like, I don't really vibe with this band or the friend group associated with this particular band. I don't really know why. Like, I'm a good time. I'm a fun girl. If you can't vibe with me, it's your fault. So anyway, I'm, I'm at this club. I'm six drinks in. I'm bored. I go to the bathroom. I, the first thing I see when I open this bathroom door is this woman standing on top of the bathroom counter and she is wearing a tube top and really short shorts and this giant jean jacket and mismatched socks with Crocs. And she looks at me and she says, oh my God, I love your hair. Will you help me? And I, I look at her and I'm like, I, I'm unequivocally down. I have nothing better to do. What are we doing? So I hop up on the bathroom counter with her and I'm like, what is the plan? <laughs> And she points to all the bathroom, the bathroom walls that have band posters like plastered all over them. And she points to one particular band poster and she's like, I absolutely love this band. Like, I want to take the posters of this band. I want to take them home with me. And I'm like, let's, let's get it. So she's having a really hard time reaching one particular band poster. It's kind of like up really high and far away from the bathroom counter. And she has no idea how much fate smiled upon her in this moment because not only was I super drunk, willing to aid in a bet, but I was also incredibly nimble. So I'm like perched on top of a hand dryer, hanging onto a pipe for balance, <laughs> reaching for a band poster. When suddenly the girlfriend of one of the guys in the band that I don't vibe with, like walks in and she just like stands there staring at me. <laughs> and I'm like, me and my best friend are working on a project right now. Like take your judgment out of our bathroom. So anyway, eventually I leave the bathroom and I run into my husband and he's like, what have you been doing? And before I can even answer, out of the corner of my eye, I see that this bouncer is walking around asking people if they have seen a woman who matches the description of my new best friend. And I'm listening and I realize that she is... thief steal something steal posters from a bathroom that sounds like a you problem honey <laughs> i like that you just like didn't even question it you just <laughs> we're just looking for a friend so bad that you just like help someone commit a heist no questions asked she's a yes man guys a yes man yes wah man call me crazy if you want but i've never liked store pop pets Susie girl that is absolutely crazy i don't think i could ever top that but <laughs> It did remind me of this one time when my husband and I were divorced and I was dating this guy that I thought was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me. He was competing in a triathlon up in Burley, Idaho, and he asked me to come with him to watch him and support him. 
He told me that he would drive, he would pay for everything, so I didn't even take my wallet. Well, we get up there, and the next day, he's running a little behind, so he just runs off to go be a part of the triathlon, and he forgot to tell me where I was supposed to leave his bike for the second part of the triathlon. So I got into his phone, hoping that I would find an email from the triathlon with details about where I could leave his bike, and I didn't find that, but what I did find is that for the entire time he and I had been dating, he had been getting happy ending massages from workers and using his best friend's name as an alias. Obviously, I panic when I find this out, and I am now stranded in Burley, Idaho, without a car, without my wallet, without anything but the clothes on my back. So what do I do? I high center his car somewhere that he'll find it, take the bike to the drop-off spot with his phone with it, with a text message on it from me saying what I'd found. Then I hitched a ride in the back of this really nice lady's truck and she took me to the closest grocery store that she could find so that I could sit in an electric shopping cart in the back of the <laughs> store and bawl my eyes out trying to figure out what the I was gonna do. After I'd taken some time to cry and think, I called the only person that I could think of to call in that time, my ex-husband. I told him what had happened and four hours later, he was standing in front of that grocery store in Burley, Idaho, ready to take me home. He drove me home all the way to Utah, didn't ask me one question, didn't interrogate me, nothing. He just let me sit there in silence and cry until we were home and he dropped me off. Six months later, we got yeah. married. Eight years later, we live in this beautiful house together. But girl, yes, store-bought pesto <laughs> is crazy. You know, I knew where you were going with that. I'm sorry, but like nobody picks up nobody in a situation like that if it's not leading to something else. We love this for you, babe. Just think, you finding out that disgusting truth about that guy you were seeing led to your marriage the second time around. God, I love store-bought pesto. Honestly, like, l let me just show you the best store-bought pesto. <laughs> Wait, where is it? Where is it? I get it at Italy. Where the hell is it? No, no, all these other ones don't don't come close. Where is it? I just like I really wish that I could show you which one it is. <laughs> you gotta get the Genevieve pesto. The Genevieve basil. Alright. Then you'll like store-bought pesto. Subscribe!